What would you think if I told you you could make all these instruments with just two template instruments that allow you to create all these different looks with just the simple changing of some user properties and some uh, user uh, variables in the scripts? Yeah, I had a chance to dig a little deeper into the, uh, the user uh, property defined adjustable instruments. Uh, was a little bit uh, stimulated to post what I'd been doing after I saw what Tony had been doing on his uh, video. And I strongly suggest you go and look at that if you haven't seen it. He's really taken care of almost everything. The only thing I offer that's a little different is a little more flexibility in the look of the instrument, but certainly not as easy to use probably for the end user. But I'd like to show you what I've done here. As you can see, all these instruments have slightly different looks. Now, this allows you to set a starting angle and an ending angle, allows you to set the arcs, allows you to tell it how many divisions you want and how many subdivisions, automatically labels. It also allows you to have a single needle, a dual needle, if you want to do both instruments or both engines with one instrument, or you can uh, have just the instrument run left or right, the number one or number two engine. As you can see, you can change those angles. The angles can even start both on the same side or the opposite side. We've also added the ability to resize the text and to move the text uh, both a little vertically and laterally. And it's, uh, I'll show you how that's done shortly. Now there's two templates here. One is the small instrument template and one is the large instrument template. I figured some people will want some large instruments and small instruments. And what I've done is uh, just made the screw sizes look correct when you downsize it. Also the needle. So actually all this is drawn on a canvas except for the bezel, uh, the screws, and the uh, needles. Everything else is done uh, with the canvas through code. So let me show you a little bit of how this is done. So uh, let's take one of the instruments just an example. We'll take the manifold pressure, and I'll show you uh, the user properties. I've tried to keep this simple uh, because I didn't want it to be too complicated. I'm going to run through the user properties that you can adjust. First of all, you can tell it whether you want it to show the panel or not. You can select a hex color or a named color for the background. You can also tell it if you want the screws to be shown and the bezel to be shown. There's some cases where guys are building physical bezels and they just like to put a black background and, uh, and no bezel and uh, just place physical bezels above. Uh, the next thing is whether it's uh, both instruments, both engines, I should say, single, a right engine, left engine, or single engine. Then we have the upper red line, and you can tell it if you want to show the upper red line. Um, I added that on a later version here, but this this there is a, a checkbox for upper red line, just like you see down here, show lower red line. That was changed, uh, but I didn't change in this specific example that I'm doing showing you here. Uh, the upper red line value, uh, the upper and lower yellow arc up uh, start and finish, the upper value and lower value. If you set those equal, the the arc of course isn't visible because there's no area drawn. Again, the green arc, the start and the end, the lower yellow arc. And the yellow arcs are drawn over the green arc so that uh, you can position a yellow arc in the middle of a green arc if you like. Then the, again, show lower red line and the value for the lower red line. Of course, just one value because it's a radial. And then uh, you can enter the value of the lowest major graduation and other the bottom of the scale and the angle for that. And then the upper graduate, in this case, 90 degrees. Now, the angles are measured up, straight up is zero, counterclockwise is negative, clockwise is positive. So minus 90 would be around at the 3 o'clock position or 9 o'clock position. And then 50 for the highest value, and that's at 120 degrees. And then the number of major graduations, that's the number of divisions between the graduations, not the tick marks, and the number of minor graduations. And then uh, the position of the instrument, of course, is uh, just a standard standard panel uh, uh, property. So again, I'll show you that instrument, that panel again. 
and you can take a look at that instrument. There we go. And you can see how these work. Now, that's all you can change just using the user properties. If you want to change the, you can change the thickness of the tick marks. You can change the depth of the tick marks. You can change the uh, width, the depth of the green arcs. As you can see here, I have a, a wider green arc on this oil temperature, uh, but on the fuel flow, I have a narrower green arc. Those are adjustable. The uh, size of the lines can be adjusted. And uh, you can, as I said before, you, there's three text areas. There's an upper, a lower, and a bottom. And you can change the font uh, size and the location to those. They're just located as a percentage of the width down the face of the gauge and horizontal. That way, if you wanted to resize, they would maintain that because it's a fractional adjustment instead of a pixel adjustment. So as you can see, they fit nicely together with large and small because of the screws being the same and the bezel resized. The bezel didn't look right. If, if I just downsized in scale, the screws were too small. The barrel was bezel was too uh, too narrow and the uh, needle was too narrow. So therefore I made a large and a small. Now my thinking is that this will be a thing where I'll have, I'm going, and unlike Tony's where he's got a, an all-in-one instrument, my thinking is I'm going to create uh, all the basic instruments in a generic form, uh, small or large, and then allow the user just to change those user properties. And if they want to get fancy, they can change the angles and so on. Uh, well, of course, they can change the angles with the user property, but the idea is that the basic look of the instrument can be changed. If you want to change the text or the width of the of the you know the fancy stuff, you might have to go just under the hood and look at those. Now, let me show you the uh, script to show you how that's done. So I'm going to go to a user tab, uh, the create tab here, and get one of these in up. Oops. Let's get a small user template and that's what I'm creating is a template for each uh, each instrument there's the small user adjustable template if I start that for you you can see what it looks like it uh, goes from 0 to 100 it just has a few arcs in there it's uh, always got the uh, data ref for the tachometer and this template I'll put out there so if people want to create their own versions of this different instruments they can they can start with this if they want to just adjust the arcs, and uh, in that way, if you you know you can you can adjust the arcs without very much work, uh, the, the starting at, the starting of value, the divisions, the basic stuff you can do very easily. But if you want to get under the hood, and I'll show you the, how this script. Now I love in this new script editor in uh, that's built into Air Manager in version 3.5. If you haven't started using the beta yet, you can see now instead of having to use a text editor, you can edit the text right in here. And, you can see at the top it says user property adjustments here, uh, and there's that. Uh, you can see uh, bezel property. That's the thing I, I added later. Bezel vis is bezel visible. Uh, is I'm sorry, the upper red line visible, true or false. So anyway, those are all those user properties, and they go down to here. And then it says end of user properties, and it says scripter defined adjustments. Now here we have things like, uh, as I said. If it's a large format instrument or a small, if it's large format, if that's true, then it'll use the correct graphics for that. If it's false, it'll use the small uh, graphics. So you won't have to mess with the graphics at all. It automatically can change that with that with that variable there. Um, and then the face diameter is a per percentage of the total instrument width. If you want to adjust that circle, uh, you can change the face color, the major. This is all well documented too here in the in the uh, in the comments if you want to look at that major graduation depth major graduation width this is in pixels and this is in degrees minor graduation depth and you can see minor graduation width again I have 1.5 degrees you can use fractional degrees you have to use uh, integer pixels for the depth um, and then here's your first label area it's labeled upper you just go in here and select that and type in the new name you can change the the uh, label size, the font size, you can change the label vertical position. Here right now it's set at 0.6 down the uh, vertical, 60% down from the top of the instrument, you know, percentage of the face of the uh, instrument. And then the label position horizontal, 50 would be centered, of course. 
are 0.5 or 50%. Then the lower and the bottom work the same way. Then we have the label text size. That's the size, as it says, of the circular markings. And then we can have an indent factor. It starts off with a default of 0.7, but you can use that to, if you have labels that don't look right, you can pull it in by, uh, you know, reducing that and it'll decrease, uh, proportionally decrease the radius of that circle of numbers. And then the label vertical position is you can take that entire circle and move it up and down a little bit to fine tune it. Sometimes that's necessary, depending on the, the size of the, the shape of the arc and so on. Then we have the red arc depth and the yellow and the green arc depth. And then we have the red line width, which is in degrees. And finally, we have a label value adjustment. Uh, that will be adjusted for you if you're using an instrument that's already uh, set up for a certain uh, function. That will be set already. But basically, it, it comes to the case where, for example, at RPM, and it is explained here, you have 2,500 RPM, but you don't want 2,500. You want, let's say, 25 on the on the graduation. So then you'd have to put a factor of, of 0 0.01 here and explains that here. And that's the end of the scripter adjustments. And the only other thing that you would have to do if you wanted to make a custom instrument for a different variable is come down here to the uh, to the uh, data refs, uh, subscriptions on FSX and X-Plane and change these for whatever you want to do. And then you might have to come up here and make a small data correction factor if because uh, sometimes X-Plane and, and FSX I uh, have weird units and you need to make the units the same as what you're displaying so uh, so that the match it'll match up with the scale so so anyway I'll, I'll post these uh, at some point I'm going to continue building out a set kind of a generic set of the basic instruments I'll do some other things like uh, each I got the cylinder head temperature the fuel flow you know might even do some uh, generator outputs and uh, create those basic instruments and then make those available in the store. And then you can take those and uh, if you're just a simple user who doesn't want to get too deep into it, just change the user properties as with Tony's. But if you want to get a little bit deeper into it, the template will be there too and you can use that as a starting point. Just clone it before you start working with it and adjust it, uh, changing uh, with a function of the instrument, the labeling and all that. And then when you've done that and you're happy with it in the uh, the create tab here, then you just need to come back up to the and you've put all those values in down here in the uh, on the bottom here the the properties. You put these values in and get the instrument to look the way you want. Then you just need to come back up here to the user property definitions at the top and just change the default value so that it matches the value that you want to show up. And that way, when someone uh, would someone would bring that instrument into their uh, project uh, from the store, it would already have the, the exact look of the one that you designed, and then it could work from there. Otherwise, it's going to go back to the default 0 to 100 that I showed you, the default instrument that you see right here. Uh, it's not going to be changed because, uh, I mean, the, anything that's in the script will be changed, but the user properties will revert back to the default values when that's brought into a new project. So if you want it to look exactly the way that you have it set up, which it would be best, you should come back in here when you're done and change all these uh, these property values to be equal to the default values, which as you can see, and in each of these properties, it's the third number here. You can change that to the value that you've selected and you should be good to go. Anyway, that's, that's where I am. Uh, uh, I think it's kind of exciting that we got a couple different approaches to the same problem. Uh, with Tony, uh, of course, it's hard to beat Tony's coding. He is um, the Swiss Army knife of programmers, I think, but and certainly much more skilled than I am. But but uh, I'm always thinking of ideas, and I'll keep working on that. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll make some instruments uh, sets that can be used uh, by any average user to to modify them and make them work for the airplane that you want to use um, uh, very easily. And uh, you can have at least the color bar band markings, of, even if it doesn't have the beautiful visual uh, uh, look that you're looking for, it'll still have the, uh, uh, the basic color markings and limitations. And when we combine that with the airspeed indicator and all the engine instruments, and then some other generic versions of, of uh, the uh, CDIs and uh, 
and uh, generic heading indicators and so on, we should be able to build out a set of pretty generic. And then I'd like to see maybe a generic version of some glass too that people can bring into their projects and uh, and modify to meet the the needs uh, that they have for for different airplanes that haven't had a custom set built for them yet. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, and as I said, I'll post Tony's link there, and you need to watch that video. It's an excellent video, and he's got some really exciting exciting stuff there that's really, there's a lot of preferences to set, but once you set them and they're remembered from session to session, you can set up a really nice cockpit with very little, with little coating, uh, and it's very flexible. It appears what he's done. Thanks a lot. See you soon.